Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the last lesson of this section. It is the uh, measurement unit and lesson seven is surface area and volume of composite objects, essentially taking in all the objects that we know of uh, and have learned about so far and then finding out um, their surface areas and volumes when you put them together in a whole bunch of weird and fun ways. Um, so let's get right down to it. Uh, composite objects are made of two or more distinct objects. So we're essentially going to find the surface area and volume of each distinct object and then add them together. So uh, we're finding the volume of this whole thing uh, right here. Um, it is a box, a rectangular box with a pyramid on top. Um, we are finding the volume of it. Yes, the volume of this object. Yes, we're finding the volume of it. So the volume of this object is going to be the volume of the pyramid plus the volume of the rectangle. Um, when we break it down, that's actually not too bad because we know both of those formulas. We know that the volume of a pyramid is equal to the base area multiplied by the height divided by three. That's the height of the pyramid, which if we check that out, we're actually given. The base area, which we know from the dimensions of the, of the box, um, and then I'll divide it by three. And then for the volume of a rectangle, well, that's just the length, the width, and the height of that um, box. So we can definitely do that. Let's just plug those numbers in and find out what we get. So the base area of the um, pyramid is going to be 6.7 by 2.9. Uh, those are the two sides that make up the lengths of that pyramid. So 6.7 multiplied by 2.9, and then the height of that pyramid is 2.1 meters. Divide that all by three, because we only want a third of what that volume would bring. Um, we then add the length times the width times the height, so that's 6.7 times 2.9 times 2.9. Um, we'll add that all together. We get 100, uh, let's see, sorry. Right, 13.601 meters cubed plus 56.347 meters cubed for a total of 70 meters cubed. That is the volume of that composite object. Double check my math. I make mistakes. Um, let's move on to the next one. We're going to determine the volume of this composite object to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter. So in this one, it looks like we have a cylinder and we also have a hemisphere. Okay. So the volume of a hemisphere plus the volume of a cylinder. We found out what these um, equations uh, are, what these formulas are, so we can plug them in. The volume of a hemisphere we know is 4 pi r cubed and then only one third of it, then all divided by 2 again, right, because we've only got half. That's the volume of a sphere and then divided by a half, plus the volume of a cylinder is the base area multiplied by the height. So if we do this math, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's 2 over 3 pi r cubed. Plus we know that the base area uh, of a cylinder is pi r squared um, because it is circle multiplied by the height. Um, we know what the radius is, so that's good. Uh, and we know what the height of the cylinder is, so that's good. We can plug that all in find out what uh, the volume total is. So 2 over 3 pi uh, radius is 18 cubed plus pi times 18 squared and the height is given as 32. We plug that in we get um, 12,214.5 Not sure that that is right again. 
stop and let's check. Let's punch it into our calculator to see if we can actually get it. We'll take the time. So that's 18 times 18 times 18 times pi times 2 divided by 3. So yes, that is 12,214.5 centimeters cubed. And we're going to add this next part. Let's do this as well. 18 times 18 is 18 squared. Multiply that by 32 and then multiply that by pi. So I get 32,572.0. And then slide this up a little bit. We add these together. Punch these in again, plus. We get 44,786.5 centimeters cubed. Okay, there we go. We made sure we got it right that time. Uh, okay, so that is the volume of that composite object. Let's move on to the next question. We're then going to determine the surface area of a very similar object, different dimensions, but the same um, kind of a shape. So it's the surface area of a hemisphere. So the surface area total is equal to the surface area of a hemisphere plus the surface area of, if we think about a cylinder, um, it's hard to determine like what the surface area of just the outside would be. But if you cut it down the side and you lay it flat, it's actually just a rectangle. So I'm going to call it the surface area of a rectangle. And then we're going to add the surface area of a circle, which is on the bottom. Those are the three different parts to this. So let's make our formula as we go through. We know the surface area of a hemisphere. Uh, that's just the outside, not the circle part, that's actually covered, is, um, let's see, 2 pi r squared. Uh, the surface area of that rectangle. Now, we know that if we were to cut it, then one side would be 4 feet long, right? That is the height. So we know that one side of that rectangle would be the height. And the second side of the rectangle is actually the circumference of that circle. If you were to stretch it out, that becomes one side. Um, so the circumference is also pi d. So that's for the surface area of a rectangle. And then we know what the surface area of a circle is. This is for the bottom. It's pi r squared. We can combine these outer two, um, the two pi r squared and pi r squared into one term add them together, so that's 3 pi r squared plus h times pi times the diameter to get us the surface area. Let's plug in those values, I believe we have them. So we have 3 times pi times, the radius is 2, so that's 2 squared plus the height is given as 4 feet times pi, so if the radius is 2 that means the diameter is 4. And plug that in as 4. We then can determine the surface area uh, to be 88 feet squared. We're talking about surface area, so our unit is squared. Uh, I believe that's it for that one. We took the different portions, we added them together, we combined like terms. Got our final answer. Uh, last question, I do believe, yes. Last question. Uh, given is a composite object here. We want to determine the surface area of the following. So again, we're going to break this into different parts. Uh, the surface area will involve uh, four different triangles. Right There are the four that are on the top. It looks like all the sides of the cube are the same. So that means that all four of those faces on the pyramid are going to be the same. So that's four times the area of a triangle plus um, it's actually five sides to a cube. There's the four around the sides and then on the bottom. We don't count the one on the top because it's covered. So five times the surface area 
um, of a square, which is length times width. So uh, surface area is equal to four times a half times the base of the triangle multiplied by the height of the triangle. Oh boy, uh, do we have the height of the triangle? I don't believe we do. We have the slant height of the triangle, but that's actually what we want because we're talking about surface area. Oh, sometimes we need to just make sure what we're using. So the height of the triangle is the slant height because we're talking about surface area and that's what we have, that's what we want, so that's great. Uh, we're then going to add five times the length times the width. So let's plug in our numbers. Four times a half times the base uh, length is five times the height given is four, that's the slant height again, plus five times for five sides of the cube uh, that are showing, times the length, which is five, times the width, which is five. So five times five times five, that's 125. Let's see if we can do this in our head. We've got four divided by two is two. Two times five is 10. 10 times four is 40. 40 plus 125. That's 165. Let's think back to find out what our units are. Meters squared, because we're talking about surface area. Okay. So you saw where I could get tripped up there um, in determining whether I should use the height of the pyramid or the height, slant height. So just make sure that when you're talking about surface area, you're using the slant height, and when you're talking about volume, you use the height of the pyramid. Um, really easy to get confused and stuff like that. Um, that is it for this section. Do the practice problems and the exit slip, um, and then you're ready for the assessment. Uh, again, thanks for watching.